Section 13.2 is titled Reflections and Glide Reflections. Um, and we're going to keep going along the path of talking about transformations. So if you remember from the last section, transformations are taking one image and somehow manipulating it and turning it into another image. The manipulations that we did last time were called translations, um, sometimes also called slides. Um, there's other resources that I've used that are called shifts. You're just picking the object up and you are sliding or shifting or translating it to another location is physically picking it up and moving it. Um, and I believe we also did rotations. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. And the rotations were somehow we were spinning it around a fixed point. The fixed point was called the turn center, and the angle by which we were spinning it was called the turn angle. Um, and then we had to also specify in most situations if we were doing it clockwise or counterclockwise, um, except for when it's 180 degree turn. So today we're going to move on to the next type of transformation, which is called a reflection. So a point P is reflected over a line L, and when that happens, its mirror image is a point P prime. And here's what all these things are called. The line L is called the reflecting line. If the point P is actually on the reflecting line, then it stays the same. It's kind of like if the turn center was the actual point on the object, it doesn't change. And if P is not on the line L, then L is the perpendicular bisector of segment P, P prime. A reflection will reverse the orientation, and it is another example of an isometry. Does anybody remember what isometry was from last time? Uh, maintains uh, distance or length. Right, it preserves the distance or the length. Um, and it also sort of <coughs> visually speaking, it means that the angles stay the same and the side lengths stay the same. The image is essentially the same image. If somehow we were able to pick up the two images and shift and adjust them right, they would line up perfectly. They're congruent. We also used that phrase last time. You're right. All right, so you're thinking something like a mirror image at this point. So if you were to take your hand and you were to hold it up like this and then you were to turn it like this, it would be a mirror image. The shadow of it anyway would be right. It would cast the same shadow. I realize you're looking one side palm of my hand and the other side is the back of my hand, but the, but the overall shape, the image part of it, would be the same. So we're going to talk about a couple of different ways that we think about it and can construct reflections. Um, the first one is the idea of folding it along a line. So if you have this reflecting line L, that's the blue line that's in the middle, and you fold it along that line, it would create the mirror image, the reflection on the other side of that line. So you see on the left-hand side, you've got this sort of hollowed shape, and they've drawn for you in a shaded green shape to actually just specify the difference on the right-hand side. Just like last time, we call the original image the pre-image, okay, the original shape, I should say, the pre-image, and the resulting shape is the image. Okay. Um, another image we talk about is sometimes about tracing paper. So there's that line L again. They're using M on this slide, so we'll use line M. Line M in the middle is the blue line, and if we were to use tracing paper, that's that beige color that they're putting on top of that. If you were to use that tracing paper beige and you were to flip the paper over so that the lines matched up again, you would have, again, a reflection. Now I want to go back and talk about one of the details that I didn't actually clearly show you. I just read it. It says if P is on line L, then P is equal to P prime. So this image over here gives a really good example of that. This particular point is on line L, so its image after reflection is also on line L, right? Yeah. Over here, I don't have any points like that. So when I reflect my image here, every point went to a different point over here, the reflection. You can even see on the reflection, they've really reflected the entire sheet of paper so that they've even got their letters written backwards, right? Can you see that? It's clearer probably on my screen than on the paper, but... If you were to connect these two with a line segment like this, then according to this piece of information over here, the line L or M in this picture is the perpendicular bisector of the line P, P prime, or in this case, C, C prime, right? In order for it to preserve distances, this distance and this distance would have to match, okay? And because we're, we're flipping it over, these angles in the middle are also 90 degree angles. That's what happens when we actually fold that paper in half is that we're creating those 90 degree angles along that piece of paper. So I have the perpendicular bisector. And every point would do that. So every point is 
matched to its perpendicular bisector. And I know I just drew another vertice, but there's nothing special about those. I could just as easily have drawn points on the lines themselves, the line um, interiors of the line themselves, like so. And it would work the same way. Okay, so every point has the ability to do that. If the shape's truly two dimensional, even the points in the interior of the object would have the value to the ability to do that. Okay, so I can get this to cooperate with me. Evidently, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, all the vertices, all the points along the edges, and truly even the point in the interior if you were looking at a two-dimensional shape instead of the, just the outline of the shape would work too. Exactly. Okay, so this is a reflection. I want to talk again about dot grids because you see them used a lot. Um, you'll see them used a lot without the coordinate axes at younger grades as well. Um, you usually don't see the coordinate axis used until seventh grade probably. You might see it occasionally in a sixth grade kind of classroom, but you'll see dot grids earlier than that. We don't have any orientation, you know, X and Y and values left and right and ordered pairs, none of that. We just have dot grids. So if we're taking a look at this dot grid and we were folding it along the line, all of the points have to be matched to their perpendicular bisector. So see if you can fold along your line and draw what you believe would be the reflection of this particular shape. One, two, three, Four. I think we've got a quadrilateral here for sure. So if you fold this quadrilateral along your paper, along the line L, okay, don't throw it along anything else, you're doing it along the line L, and try to draw the image that you believe that you're going to create on your paper after that reflection. Okay, so give it your best shot. If you're using pencil, that's ideal because that way if you do make a mistake, we can fix it. As you're looking at your image, I'm not going to draw the answer just yet, make sure that it's the same image, the same shape, the same size. Orientation is not going to be the same, I know that, but make sure it's the same size. Do I have a side length of two? Do I have two side lengths of one, and do I have one that sort of crosses between what's appearing to be a square? Did you preserve all your lengths? It's a good check step. What does your image look like? Did someone want to draw theirs? Lauren, I saw your hand first. Okay, I'm going to let you draw it with the free hand tool instead of the line tool because it can be kind of finicky. Okay. Okay. Draw what you believe your image looks like. I agree with Lauren as well. Good job, Lauren. All right, so the easiest piece to actually reflect is this piece that's already perpendicular to the blue line. Do you guys agree? Because it just reflects straight across because it's perpendicular. That makes that an easy reflection. And then if we're going from there, we can figure out where do I need to go next. This one is actually horizontal, and it became vertical, and so forth as we continue around our shape. And you can make sure that you did it right by actually folding it up along the line. You can even hold it up to the light and make sure that it lined up right if you needed to. Good job. Okay, so these are called reflections. So let's do them now with a coordinate axis, a Cartesian plane. We can reflect over several, we can reflect over anything, um, but there are several values or lines that are commonly reflected over. The axes are two of those lines. The line x equals, uh, y equals x, and the line, I didn't say that right. The axes, the lines y equals 0 and x equals 0, are the y, x and y axis. That's the first two. 
And then the last two are reflections over um, our kind of, if you will, the diagonal lines, y equal x and y equal negative x. So these are sort of the four most common reflections you can make. But like, could you reflect over the line y equals 7? Sure you could. I mean, it just wouldn't have a nice closed form like I'm able to write down for these points, okay? So there's nothing truly special about these except that they're, they're convenient and they're used frequently. So in the first one, if you reflect over the x-axis, what changed in the ordered pair? The b became negative, the y became negative, yeah. So if you imagine that from an axis standpoint, let me just draw one. So if you reflect this point over the line, um, what did I say I was doing first? X, over the x-axis, it would reflect down here. The x value stays the same, right? And the y value is different, it's negative. Now if you were to reflect over the y-axis, what do you notice is different in the ordered pair? The x value changed signs, right? So if this one were to reflect over here, from my picture, it would be about right there. X distance is the same distance, but it's in the opposite direction. And the Y distance is exactly the same. So Y stays the same and the X value changes direction, which is a negative. All right, the line Y equal X is more tricky. I don't think more tricky sounds right. It's trickier. I'm going to move this over just so it's easier to draw. Okay, so if you're doing the line Y equal X, this is your line Y equal X. And if we reflect over that line, and I've drawn it in such a way that it's kind of nice to reflect over, it ends up reflecting from quadrant, what quadrant is it in right now? Two. Two, and it will reflect into which quadrant? Four. Four, good job. And it'll reflect right over here. So the 90 degree angle puts me like right here. That's the connection of the segment there. Um, and it's the same X and Y distances that are preserved, right? Um, but they're switched. And this isn't the best picture to show it. Let me actually create a different point so you can see it a little bit better if we were doing this point where the ordered pairs are different values. Then as we reflect this over, it will become over, become, it will come over here. And the value looks something like that. I did not draw that right. Let me try that one more time. How about I draw the right point in, which would be this point. Otherwise, I'm not getting in the 90 degree angle. I keep telling you I'm supposed to be getting. There's the 90 degree angle I wanted. All right. So the X and the Y are preserved, but they're switched. And that actually happens, and you might even remember that from something you did with functions or something in an Algebra 2 maybe course in high school, that reflecting over the line y equal x changes x and y. Okay, it changes the x-coordinate with the y-coordinate. All right, so let me do one more point for us, or one more switch for us. What I'm going to switch is I'm going to switch to the x equals negative y, or y equals negative x line. So here's my line. It's the same diagonal-ish, if you will, line as before, right? So now my reflection is actually going to reflect up over here. Again, the same x and y coordinates are preserved, yeah? But they're switched in their location, yeah? So, all right, let's do an example. We've got one, I think it's on the next slide. Yep. Okay, you can draw pictures if you want. You certainly don't have to. You can use sort of uh, the formulas. It almost feels like a formula from the previous slide if you like that better. Um, but we're wanting to create the reflection point in the x-axis, the y-axis, the line y equal x, and the line y equal negative x for the, points, for the point ordered pair 2, negative 3. So write down the four coordinate axes points that you believe you will get if you reflect these over these four lines. Okay, so like the first one over the x-axis, what will the point 2, negative 3 become? Oh. 2, 3. You're just changing the y value. Okay, so we're doing that for all of these. Okay, but it happens to be that it already has a negative involved, so be careful when you're changing the negative, it will become positive at different places.
All right, what did you guys get for the y-axis rotate or reflection? What was it? Negative two, negative three. All right. How about the line y equal x? Negative three, two. The signs stay the same. And what about the line y equal negative x? Okay, I heard like two or three different things. Okay, I first have to switch the numbers, right? So the x becomes y and the y becomes x. And then also I believe some signs switch. What signs switch? The negative becomes a positive, so this one would be a positive 3. And the 2 is not negative. All right, so the signs both switch too, right? Okay, everybody good with that? Uh-huh. Excellent. All right. Awesome. We have one more example. This picture comes out of a student paper. So this is like what the students would have received in a classroom after they've learned about different rotations, reflections, and things like this. And we're going to basically do a student workbook page together, at least a portion of it. So this is basically like example three. I just have one through five already on here because it's the student's work. All right, so let's read the directions together. It says, tell whether the figure in each pair are related by a slide. What have we called a slide? We call it a translation, just to remind you. Um, it says a flip. What did we call a flip? That's a reflection. That's the ones we're working on right now. Or a turn. What did we call a turn? A rotation. And if it's a turn, we have to describe it. And what does it mean when it says to describe the turn? The degree measure and? The direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise, okay? All right, so what do you think on the first one? We can use their language. We can use our language. It doesn't matter to me. What is this first one? A it's a reflection or a flip. Dr. Hans, yeah, sorry about that. I shouldn't have written that. I realized that as soon as I looked at number one, that it kind of looked like that. <laughs> and then I just want to move the word. Goodness. I'm trying to move just the word and I'm getting the whole thing. All right. So, rotation, translation, reflection. All right. How about the second one? What is the second one an example of? It could be either one, couldn't it? All right. So, I heard most of you saying turn. So, let's answer the, what it is for a turn first. If it's a turn or a rotation, what would it be? So rotation is, hang on, is, what did you say is one point? Is 90 degrees clockwise? clockwise. <clears throat> um, now, we are not asked specifically to do this, but if we took the object and we rotated it 90 degrees clockwise, we wouldn't actually be rotating it with one of the ordered pairs on the pair itself. We would probably be rotating, if I'm imaging this right, we would be rotating around this point. Is that right? Um, maybe that's not right. Hang on, let me get it right. This point? No. You can do just a flip. There's no problem with doing just a flip. I know we can rotate. Just trying to think about how. It doesn't, I don't think it lines up with the vertices either. I marked it on my paper when I marked it wrong. Um, there. Yeah, that's where it would be. You're right. This is the point we'd be rotating it around so that this about, like, for example, this length turns into this length, and that one turned into that one, the rotation. It doesn't ask us to identify the point of rotation, so we don't have to necessarily be too concerned about that, but it could be a rotation. Um, some of you also said or thought that it might be able to be a flip. It is also a flip or a reflection. What would the line of reflection be? Yeah, it'd be like the line x equals y. So if I were to put in a line right here, it would reflect over that line just fine. So we would actually have one point, there's that corner that actually would not reflect anywhere differently than itself. Uh, what is number three? 
Three is a nice translation point. Um, it actually is also something that we'll encounter next time called a glide reflection. Um, it could be. It would be a, sort of a, an awkward way to describe that because it's kind of overkill. You know, I mean, there's some ways you can do that in math, right? Like, if you multiply by one, you could multiply by seven, then divide by seven, add seven, and then subtract seven. But that would be awkward and weird, right? Okay, so, like, this actually is a glide reflection as well. It's just not a very simple way of describing what's actually going on. The simplest way is to describe it as a translation. All right, um, I think we're on four. What is four going to be? That one is a rotation. That's right, 180 degrees. So since it's 180 degrees, do I need to put the direction? No. I don't need to actually put the direction. So if you want to, you can, but you don't have to. Can this one be a flip? I mean, number two was. No. It won't work, will it? If I try to flip this, it actually changes the, uh, the image because it's not, um, it doesn't have the same symmetries that the first one did, right? Okay, number five is a little bit different. Number five asks us, asks us to do some reasoning. It says, Maria says that the figures at the right are related by a 90-degree turn, and Paul says they are related by a 270-degree turn. Who is right? Explain. It depends on what did you say, Madison? It depends on which way they're going. So, Brendan, I heard you say they're both right. They're both right or they're both wrong. They don't have to yeah, that's true. In some sense, they didn't actually specify the direction, so they're actually not giving the full description anyway. That's a true statement. Um, so they both have an angle measure that works, though. Can we all agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they both have an angle measure that works. Um, and what we're trying to figure out then is what, is their, what are they missing? And they're both missing the direction of the turn. So, um, so they're both on the right track. Let's say they're both are partially right. So if it's 90 degrees, it's 90 degrees what? Wait, how is it 90 degrees though? Hang on, let me write this down and I'll show you. I just was curious. It's fine. I'm not seeing that. If it's a 90 degree turn, they're turning it like this, 90 degrees. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it kind of depends on... Um, I guess you say, I was thinking that we were starting with the yellow, the orange figure and turning it into the red. Um, technically, I guess you could say that if we're starting with the red figure and turning it into orange, it would be 90 degrees clockwise. They didn't specify very well on this particular diagram, did they? Um, so let's, let's, pre let's presume that this is our pre-image. Sorry, I didn't even think about that. I just assumed it was the one that was straight up and down as my image to start with, but it certainly wouldn't have to be. Yeah, no, no, um, that's why I was looking at it that way, because I didn't. Yeah, that's a good question. All right, so we've got a 90 degree clockwise turn, or counterclockwise turn, or what? Yeah, if we were actually looking at the figure the way that I suggested doing so there, it would be a 270 degrees clockwise turn. Again, to get from the orange to the red. Or are you saying going all the way? Yes. Okay. But okay. the other direction. So if you were using this other direction to go like this, this would be 270 degrees because okay. it'd be 90 degrees twice, right. uh, okay. three times, okay. um, and then we'd be doing it clockwise. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on that? Mm 